Well, 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 well. Shuti Gatwa lectured us fans. He told us to go outside and touch grass. And look what happened. Yeah, 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 it was such a good idea to touch grass this week, weren't it? Dr. Ware. But does Ruby learn the lesson from this? No! She goes to touch some more grass. She walks all over the pitch, despite people telling her not to. Outside is woke. Don't go outside. There's women outside. They'll tell you you're crap in bed. Alright, we've got the gimmick of my format out of the way. Let's just talk straight now, shall we? Unlike some critics, I'm not going to call this the most genius or innovative bit of TV ever. There's obviously a lot of stuff that pulls off what this episode is going for regularly. Some of it I've even seen uh, in recent years. So I've kind of learned to enjoy the near frustration of trying to work it out, but realizing I'm never going to come to any definitive conclusion. Many people are pointing out the many reference points that I've either heard of but have yet to experience or were completely new to me. So if nothing else, I've got a long list of uh, media recommendations still. But anyway, I've got a reading of this episode, so I'll just tell you all about it, and then at the end, we can check in with the answer prancer. Originally, I thought we had a fantasy metaphor for being outed, so much that I kind of forgot how obviously it ties into Ruby's own abandonment issues from her status as an adopted kid, now looking for her birth mother as an adult. I wonder if a beat like Carla turning on Ruby would work stronger if we had spent more time with this family. I'm imagining Jackie doing this to Rose and that would fucking kill me. I'm honestly surprised by how little the Sundays have featured in the series so far, considering we've only got eight episodes. Also, this is the second time Carla has turned mean. I know neither instance was her fault, but still. Kate Stewart is in the same boat, actually, after the giggle. Third strike and you're out, Kate. What is 73 Yards about? To me, at least, it's a story about self-imposed narratives, how we ascribe meaning, and how we deal with, or don't deal with a lack of closure. (laughs) Wow, the confusing episode just so happens to be about a search for meaning and not getting any closure. What a coinky dink. Take the part of the episode that at least everyone seems to like, where Sean Phillips et al. kind of skewer the dodginess behind the Curse of Clyde Langer's premise, with the Mad Jack legend turning out to be a prank. These people playing into stereotypes that Ruby is kind of susceptible to. This exchange in the pub also sets up what I think is the broader point of the episode. Ruby is very easily persuaded by the idea of a legend come to life, of this prophecy. The notion that everything she's going through must have a purpose and that she's meant to do something. People have already pointed out Kate's remarks. And there's another scene towards the end where Ruby's, I think, daughter asks why people leave flowers at the TARDIS, and Ruby replies, she doesn't know. After being separated from the Doctor, followed by the woman, abandoned by family and allies, Ruby arrives at the conclusion that she's meant to take down the most dangerous Prime Minister the UK's ever had and save the world. But what is she basing that on? Fifteen mentions this guy offhand, before the circle was even broken, and Mad Jack is kind of a generic nickname. Lots of people are called Jack and lots of people are mad. Just look at my subscribers. As the people in the pub took the name Mad Jack and made a local legend out of it, Ruby takes what could just as easily be a coincidence. Instead of just stopping him instantly, she tries to bring him down from the inside. Doctor Who has run into this before. Take Martha joining Unit. It's all right for you. You can just come and go, but some of us have got to stay behind. So I've got to work from the inside. But I don't really think it's had much to say about conformity until this episode. Now, the big complaint that I will absolutely agree with is that in terms of politics... Well, let me just demonstrate the amount of depth it has. That 
much. Okay, Gwilym is obsessed with nuclear acceleration, despite there being so many other things the country could use that money for. Sure, that's a problem in real life. Everything with Marty, which is fucking traumatic. But ultimately, I'm not 19 anymore. Years and years probably won't impress me on a rewatch, so imagine how Mad Jack and Albion seem. But for me, at least, he's not the entire point of this episode, so it doesn't sink it for me. 73 Yards makes a damning point about Ruby's interpretation of history and her place in it. A conversation with a friend made me realise that this is Time Lord Victorious again. Ruby's apology to Marty sucks because by working within the existing systems, by using the 73 Yards rule to get rid of Gwilym, she didn't intervene sooner and protect her. She must have viewed what happened to her as collateral damage to at least some extent. Because Ruby's the one meant to save the world, and that's what she's here for, and she needed to be on the inside and wait to make sure that now was the time to act. What Ruby should have done was stop him way earlier, but because she's got this view of history, this perception of her own importance in it, this destiny in mind, she's willing to conform. I'm gonna bring about change later down the line. It's all part of my plan, my life story. Little people? Who decides they're so unimportant? You? Tellingly, time isn't rewound as soon as she defeats him. Instead, she's sent back in time, as she's about to die, given a chance to stop her past self and the Doctor from breaking the circle now that she's paid the penance. But then you have to wonder, is Gwilym still around in this new timeline? Because 15 still mentions him at the start. Is this the one case where the aborted timeline was... the nicer one? A reverse turn left, if you will. The problem with this, of course, is that the scene where Ruby defeats him is a way better moment of television than her being sent back in time. That's probably the risk that all shell games have. I'm not entirely sure I buy Ruby having hope towards the end, but overall, that's my reading. So, am I right? A hundred right million times people wrong. What chance of getting even here, let alone here? Oh dear. Not much. Here? Never in my lifetime or yours. Just watch How this then. How many thousand years? We're, we're trying this and there's a tension and it's just going to go back like that. I think so. 